Right, okay, thank you for joining the Average Golfer. It's more club testing and it's more of team average. And it's this brand behind me, it's Mizuno. And it's a product that uh, we're literally taking the wrapper off. I've not had a go with this one myself as yet. It is the new Mizuno driver. We've got the ST190. They also do the adjustable 190G, but we're gonna have a look at the sort of straight up, there's some adjustability in terms of loft, but we're gonna, it's the 190 product. It's had some great feedback and reviews from what I've seen so far. But I'm really interested as to what team average think of this product. We've got some new faces that are going to be testing this, different handicaps yet again, but all with one thing in common, and that's an opinion of their own, and they can make an assessment. Once they've been fitted for the right shaft, they'll make an assessment and evaluation on their thoughts and feedback on this product from Mizuno. So we're going to start off with, he made his debut with uh, some uh, 190 yard seven irons. Jay Byrne hits the ball for miles. How far can he hit a Mizuno ST190 and what will he think of it? Only one way to find out. Switch his camera around. Let's see what Jay thinks. Uh, club looks really nice. Uh, nice black finish. Uh, the little running bird on the top looks class for lining it up and then it fades into the graphite at the back really really nice looking club put it down by the ball and it just seems to set up really square it looks like it gives you a bit of confidence that you're going to hit it well uh, with the sound and feel of it uh, when you hit it it sounds really solid and it gives it a real crack as it goes off uh, and it just feels like a really nice club to swing and hit the ball through uh, the price yeah it's just under 400 pound but to be fair, most of the clubs that are coming out nowadays are 450 upwards, some are even at 500, so at 400, for how it performed, I think it's a pretty good price. Uh, performance of the club, it's ridiculous. It is really, really good. Um, every shot that I hit was long, uh, big, pretty good ball fly, and the dispersion was relatively tight. Um, when I was hitting mine, I still hit some long shots, but I hit a lot more bad ones, which is kind of standard with my game. So I can hit left, right, I can hit long, but with that everything was pretty pretty good down the middle, pretty straight and really enjoyable to it. Great performing club. I did tell you he hit it a long way, but I wasn't quite expecting that. That was an absolute some wallops from Jay Byrne and straight as well, which is a nice combination. I think he was pretty keen on that. Might cost him a few quid. Anyway, on from Jay. Next up is Steve Holm. Steve's a 17 handicapper. Been working on his driving at the moment. He's going through some lessons. Again, he'll be fitted for the right shaft. Another M4 user, so an interesting comparison. Over to Steve, let's see what he thinks. I would definitely pick her up off the shelf. If I was in the shop having a look at this, it's, it's classy. It's got a, a nice look to it. I love the face. Um, on a dress, I'd be happy with this club. It'd give me the confidence to start swinging with it. It's, uh, it is nice, it's a nice club. It's a nice club to uh, look at. I loved it, again. Um, it felt great. The, the sound that it produces when you hit the ball, certainly when you, you're connecting well with it, it was, uh, it was it was what you want to hear from a golf shot. Um, yeah, no, no issues with that. I'm impressed with it. it. It's it's expensive, but it is what it is these days. That the the clubs for some reason the drivers are, are creeping up, and 400 mark is about average for this this type of club. Um, if I was in the market for it, they are all the same. I'd be tempted by it, only because it, there's, there's not much out there, a lot less, unless you go second hand, but price for price, it's it, it's average for what they are these days. Right, uh, I don't use the driver a lot, and I'm just, uh, that's what that's what I'm, I'm getting lessons on at the minute. When I hit this ball, when I hit this club, it, it's great. Um, the, when you see off the figures, it's all figures about me, so so getting, getting tested is very important to think now, N not just to look at the club, the price, I think you need to get tested to get fitted for what for your swing, but we're all different. And this is the last club that I've I've got lessons on. Um, so to get a true reflection of it is hard because I'm I, I am in the middle of, of lessons. 
But when I hit this ball, when, when I use this club, I would definitely swap it right now if you, you give me the chance for the M4. Um, whether you've got the figures you want to see fr from my data, um, it's, it's to be seen, but I'd definitely swap it now for my M4. Well, I have to say, it's been a pretty impressive start, and at the minute, I'm sitting and watching and thinking, I'm dying to have a go with this myself at the minute, because these numbers are pretty impressive, and the dispersion as well. So, next up, Six Handicapper. This lad is new to the channel, Craig Evans, really steady player, very steady with the driver. He's using a Ping G30 currently, and he's going to give us his thoughts on this uh, ST190. Are we going to get three out of three in terms of positive feedback? Uh, for me, it's a classical looking club, uh, which I quite like. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of bells and whistles when it comes to, uh, to drivers um, and it has just got a lovely sort of black shine finish to it, uh, which I quite like. Um, the only issue I had when it's sitting uh, at a dress behind the golf ball, for me, it, it looks like the, the club's slightly open, which is a bit off-putting for me. Um, certainly the driver I'm using at the moment, which is the Ping G30, it, you know, if it looks square at a dress. And for this, I, I thought, why is that sitting open? I'm going to put. I felt like I was going to push yeah. the ball out, yeah, which wasn't the case. But in terms of the aesthetics of that, it didn't it didn't sit right with me. Um, but other than that, I do like the look of the club. I think it's it's really classical um, and a lovely shiny finish. The feel of the club, I, I, I really liked. Um, it's very similar to me own in many in that regard. Um, I had a few there where it went out quite out the middle of the club, uh, but I was still feeling like I was getting a solid enough strike to keep me in play. Um, and the numbers suggested that I would have been in play with those as well. Um, it kept up, kept it relatively straight for me. Um, felt consistent regardless of where I was in. As I say, I wasn't in everything out the middle there at all by any stretch of the imagination. But I wouldn't have been in trouble from from any of them either. So with that, I can't, I've got no complaints whatsoever. Uh, in terms of price, I'd have to say Mizuno may um, have been a little bit ambitious here uh, for the price. Um, looking at the club, a lot of people are going to walk past this, but it's because looking at Mizuno drivers in the past, they haven't actually been amazing uh, for a long time. Uh, this one doesn't look amazing, um, it looks it just looks classic, so a lot of people are going to walk past it for me. And at 399, there are other clubs out there for me. That people are probably going to opt for. Um, for me, it was a solid driver. It's not, but it's no better than mine. And mine's now like two years old. Um, so I think Mizuno possibly have, have missed out on the price in there. I think it's a little bit expensive. Uh, for me, as a, as a player, um, I, I hit quite a high golf ball, and so it, it's important for me for the driver to have a really low penetrating flight because uh, obviously the country we play in, there's a lot of wind flying about, um, and if my ball gets floaty, I, I can't sort of carry on the wind. Um, for me, this 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 club get into that stage of possibly floating the ball a little bit too high for me. The launch angles meant that the ball was getting up very quickly uh, and in windy conditions I probably struggled to keep control uh, of the club. It may suit other golfers of course uh, who have a lower flight it probably helped them get the ball up a little bit quicker but for me it probably uh, has that launch angle a little bit too high. Uh, for me no I wouldn't be swapping my current driver the Ping for, for the Mizuno. Um, if it was one the cost um, is too high uh, and the performance wasn't as consistent uh, as we own. Do you know what, I thought actually made a bit of sense there in terms of maybe that product isn't quite right for Craig and he'd be perhaps better in the more adjustable ST190G where we can perhaps move the weighting around, bring that spin down a little bit, maybe something a little bit more suitable for him. But anyway, that was good to see the thoughts of Craig Evans there. Uh, next up, we're going to get to Brian Treadwell. Brian is a very, very consistent 11 handicapper, very steady with his current uh, Rogue, Callaway Rogue driver, very keen on it. But what will he think after he's hit the Mizuno ST190? Come on, Brian, let's see what you think. I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of looks determining your overall assessment of a club. But looks being the question, it's a great looking club. Um, I like the colour combination throughout it. It's very subtle and understated. Um, the sole looked great and uncluttered. Um, and from the top line looking down, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty club. The feel of the club was good. Um, I liked it both in terms of grip, but almost everything these days is adjustable. Initially, we tinkered with the shafts to find one that was more suited to my swing, uh, swing pattern, swing speed. Uh, and then uh, through impact, um, I liked it. I felt as though there was feedback to let me know when I'd struck the ball well and when I didn't strike it so well I had a good idea as to where my miss was going as a result of that, that 
that feedback I gained through the strike. Um, it, it's sort of right there in the middle of the range, I suppose, with, with all of the, the clubs at, at this level. Um, I think that's too high, um, but it's about standard. I think if I was contemplating a switch to this club, then you go to the same place, you, you fit in, you're a regular customer, you're then effectively trading in your existing club to get this, so the price on the face of it comes down. Um, but that's just the current trend, that's why they're all priced it would appear. I found in terms of performance it was very similar to what I was getting from my Rogue on the strikes. So my, my failings would be leaking out to the right a little bit. Um, I caught this one really well on, on one or two and I caught my Rogue really well on one or two. What was particularly impressive for me about this was that the spin was give or take about a thousand uh, revolutions less than it is on the Rogue. I don't fully understand the consequences of that but it's something I might ask about to learn a bit more about um, because if, if going forward that's likely to lead to tighter dispersion and, and more consistent outcomes then that would be the reason for me thinking about getting a club like this as opposed to necessarily other factors such as the aesthetic or the look. Now I should say that Brian has currently took a ST190 and he's in the bays over there for further testing. He was pretty impressed with the results in terms of numbers that he got there and he wants to carry on for a little bit longer so this could be an expensive test this one for Brian. Anyway last but not least um, our resident PGA professional Lewis Johnson he's here might be the right product for him in terms of the version he'd probably go for again the 190G I would think but let's see what he can do with uh, this in terms of performance and then get his overall opinion on this one. Really like the way it looks. I think on the shelf it's nice and clean. It's the non-adjustable one, so it's got not much going on at the top there. And I think at a dress, uh, really liked it. Absolutely great looking club. Uh, one thing though, when we were playing around with the adjustability to find the sort of right launch angle and right sort of uh, conditions for me, I did have to lower the loft, which opens the face, which made it sat a little bit open, which I'm not too fond of. Um, but apart from that, all around very, very nice. Again, really happy. Um, amazing how you'd never tell um, sort of where you hit it on the club face. Great sound to it, but all the feedback you could ever want. You know, really responsive, really solid feel and sound, um, which was really surprising. You know, um, you know, very, very, very good. So I think you know you could be critical of three nine nine non adjustable. Uh, Mizuno, I think they, they, yeah, they think they've missed a trick by maybe not putting it a bit lower. Um, I don't think many people walk in and go, you know, wow, or um, well, that's the first one to choose. I, I definitely now, you know, recommend anyone go and try it on performance. Um, but yeah, maybe a little bit higher than it should should be. But it, once you've tried it, I don't think anyone can argue with the performance relative to the price point. So yeah, so overall, I think uh, very very happy uh, feel and performance and the look of it you know i had to tweak it down a little bit it's the only i mean it's the slightest of slight negative um, but all around just a great club and, and i would seriously consider putting it in play definitely right okay so it's a valuation sign from my perspective and uh, sitting at the back of the room watching people hit these balls it's uh, I, I quite enjoy it actually and it's uh, it's really interesting to stand back and sort of watch the different people, the different strikes, the different handicap, the different swings. But the one thing for sure was that pretty much everybody um, hit the ball very, very well with this ST190 driver. Now, uh, maybe that was just uh, a good day for everybody, I don't know, but there's some significant differences between um, some people's existing club and the ST190 as well. The sound was, for me, uh, something again very noticeably different and um, I knew when everybody had, had struck the ball well it was a real crisp nice sound and so much so that I just couldn't wait to give it a go myself I did afterwards and hit a few balls I didn't record any data um, but I have to say it performed really really well and uh, and was very interesting indeed um, for me again everybody's numbers spoke volumes for the performance of the club yes they're fitted for a shaft in the time spell that we have, 
they're fitted in a shaft that is um, deemed suitable. And uh, as you can see, it certainly uh, got it right in terms of most people. I think the one uh, negative was perhaps Craig in terms of we didn't get any better performance for him. And I think, like I said at the time, I think the, uh, the 190G with the adjustability, bringing that spin number down for him, a little bit more adjustability might have been interesting to see what we could have achieved there and whether we could have seen any performance benefits for him as well. But overall, huge, huge success. Uh, I, again, personally love the look of the club. It's stripped down. It's uh, very simple. Everybody had the same opinion with regards to the price. I think they all felt it was perhaps, uh, if you read the same as me, all felt it was a little bit high. And if they'd have pulled it in close to that uh, Cobra F9 price, then I think it could have been an even bigger deal for Mizuno. But they pitch where they pitch, and that's up to them. But I think that was, again, something that everybody noticed for a Mizuno driver in at 400 quid, perhaps just a little bit top heavy and missed a little bit of a trick there. But who are we to tell those people uh, what to do? Anyway. Enough said, like I said, you, you've seen it all, the proof is in the pudding there. I hope you enjoyed the video, I certainly did too. We've got a real interesting one coming up next week. We've got hold of the Honma product uh, that Justin Rose switched over to. So that's gonna be the next test up for Team Average. As ever, hit that like button, comments down below, tell me what you think. If anyone's tried that ST190, let us know. And uh, I will catch you very, very soon.